Welcome to Everything Life Coaching. I'm John Kim. And I'm Noelle Cordo. We are the founders of Lumia. And we're super passionate about all things coaching, and we want to share what we've learned from over a decade of coaching and training thousands of life coaches. Let's dive into the science and magic of coaching. Today's episode is the Thanksgiving episode, and it's going to be a fun one, but also I think uh, hopefully meaningful and enlightening. Noel, good morning. Hello, how are you? I'm doing well. I didn't say in lighting right. Did you hear me? <laughs> well, y- you know, you made a new word. Um, <laughs> I always and do. We can, we can roll with that. Um, what does in lighting mean to you? <laughs> well, you know what? I said in light. Uh, the, it means the, uh, like, I don't know, lighting candles, lighting yourself <laughs> up. I don't know. That's what I saw. I like it's, it. I like yeah. it. Enlighting everyone. This is what we do here. Uh, what does Thanksgiving mean to you? It's coming up. Yeah. So when I, when, when I, originally, when the idea for a seasonal podcast came up, the natural coaching positive psychology lens is typically gratitude because mm-hmm. that's what right. we have all been socialized to think about in terms of Thanksgiving, giving thanks. And then I started doing a little bit of of digging around current contexts with Thanksgiving and different ways that we can orient ourselves to this holiday because over the last couple of those years, the way that we grew up and the way that we were socialized to think about Thanksgiving um, doesn't really take into account a lot of very real world perspectives that are Mm -hmm. linked to this particular holiday. So I thought we could start with how we grew up and how we were socialized. So when you were growing up, what were you taught about Thanksgiving? So uh, being, you know, Korean American and my parents being old school, we didn't celebrate, uh, holidays that much. And also, uh, my mom always, uh, chose to open her business for for, during the holiday holidays. And so, um, I ended up spending Thanksgiving at, uh, the neighbor's house. You know, I was the token orphan, as they say, um, that sat at the end of the table, you know, that was their, um, (laughs) the, the family's way of giving back, right. Helping out the, uh, the neighborhood orphan. And so, it, it was great for me because I got to experience, um, you know, quote unquote, uh, America, which was uh, turkey and gravy and, you know, all of that stuff. So as a, as a child, um, it was a treat for me that I got to go to someone else's house and, uh, you know, have this lavish meal. Wow. So you got to kind of plug into the quintessential Norman Rockwell American yes. Uh, yes. culture through this holiday. How about at school? Were you given any messages about this holiday? at school? Uh, no, I think at school, I mean, you know, obviously the, uh, the Turkey, the pilgrims and, and all of that stuff. Um, I'm very kind of a cartoony two dimensional thing, you know, but, uh, it, yeah, it was, uh, it was a, a, about like, like Halloween, you know, it was about the candy. Thanksgiving was about the food. And, uh, I, 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 uh, didn't get uh, the education. I didn't get uh, what this holiday means or could mean to you. Yeah. I think I had a really similar experience um, in terms of not really understanding what this holiday means, what this holiday came from, the historical context around it, or even um, the underlying importance of of why the food is centered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, For me, it was at school, turkeys. Um, in my art class, I remember, uh, I think I was in first or second grade. We, we made, um, general, you know, Indian costumes out of, Mm, um, brown paper bags. And I I had to bring a brown paper bag in. Um, (laughs) and then in, at home, um, my family ritual was centered around my mom's side, which was it's, it's the Italian American heritage first generation. And so um, meals are crazy, first of all. And yeah. we did like a full Italian meal first with pasta and meatballs mm. and brajol. And then we did a turkey. 
<laughs> with, yeah, yeah. with all of the yeah. fixings. And so it was just, you know, it was kind of like a big Italian meal with the token, you know, turkey at the table to, to bring in those um, American traditions. But I didn't really have too much of an anchor or, or a connection to it. Um, and now I'm, I'm really early in my path of understanding um, and unlearning narratives around Thanksgiving that are harmful. Mm -hmm. And the lens that I'm starting to understand this through is decolonization. Mm -hmm. And what we're talking about with decolonization is decentering the dominant culture which is um, European centric. Right. And uh, the starting point where, where I really started to dig into this was a, a wonderful um, site and blog that I, I subscribed to called the Anti-Racism Daily. And it has mm. a fantastic list of resources for anyone who's interested. And when we're talking about, you know, decentering um, European centric, uh, uh, quintessential white American centric culture, um, it's that's a that's really kind of knocking the apple cart over in terms of the way that we are all socialized to to think about this holiday. Right. Um, have you had any uh, light posts along the way to help with a more current and progressive definition of this day? Yeah, so I'm going to take a different approach. Uh, I love your approach, and I think uh, uh, especially today, and I think it it probably is happening in school. Where be, just because of uh, you know how how the landscape is changing and our language is changing and we're sensitive, um, I don't know if we're sen we're we're more sensitive to to things right like culture, race, all of that. Um, I wonder how Thanksgiving is presented in like the fourth graders' classroom today because I, I, I I'm hoping that it's very different than when we were in fourth grade and it was very you know like the whole. Um, the colonization thing, you know, the, uh, the Indian people dressed up and then you got the pilgrims and you got Turkey and it was very, um, I don't know, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't diverse, right? It was just very flat in one tone. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I think that, you know, the, the answer to your question is it really depends. It mm -hmm. really depends on, on what's where, cool, what's, yeah, what's what, yeah. Uh, on, on where you happen to be, you know, at any given time. Um, when I was, looking into this topic for our purposes, a question that I asked myself is, you know, why is it important to talk about this for, through the lens of coaches? Mm -hmm. And I went back to the ICF core competencies where we have a duty to remain aware of and open to the influence of context and culture on mm -hmm. the self and others. Sure. And that's exactly what we're talking about here. You know, how is Thanksgiving being consumed and interpreted in different regions all over the country? And for so many, um, holidays can be a lightning rod for emotions, oh, yeah. uh, for biases, right. for blindness, um, for so many, you know, pieces of us that, that we, we want to be held gently. Yeah. Well, my, so my angle would be because Thanksgiving has always been about um, family and giant meals. Um, when I grew older and became single and I lost uh, uh, extended family, you know, because of divorce and I have a very small family and because they're Korean, they don't really celebrate a lot of holidays. I found myself alone at Thanksgiving and uh, I had to redefine it. And then I started to get more empowered by celebrating something like Thanksgiving uh, by myself or using it, um, using the redefining the holiday as a, a, a space for me to connect to me. So maybe I would, uh, you know, take a six hour motorcycle ride and camp out somewhere, or maybe I would, uh, you know, um, take myself out to dinner, or maybe I would, you know, do something where it doesn't have to be you, you know, going home to a giant family and all of that stuff. Yeah. So, so connection to the self connection yeah. to the source and, you know, <clears throat> circling back to your really great question about, you know, what's happening inside fourth grade classrooms. I came across the Smithsonian. It's the mm -hmm. national museum of the American Indian has a resource guide for teachers and it's mm. called rethinking Thanksgiving celebrations, the native perspective on Thanksgiving. And I read it 
because I wanted to understand it. And I also wanted to understand how we can do exactly what you're talking about, maybe remove ourselves from the traditional holiday for the sake of getting together, eating too much food and right. watching football mm-hmm. um, and tune a little bit more into the history and the perspectives of native folks mm-hmm. who, you know, likely have a lot of feelings about this particular holiday that, that need to be centered, frankly. Sure. Sure. Um, So what I learned is that as we're kind of moving down this path, especially through the lens of self-education and educating others, it's really important to highlight accurate representation of Native knowledge, Mm -hmm. vibrancy of culture, and the, the real history of what went down. So this, from an inclusive lens, this means um, naming the tribes that participated in Thanksgiving Mm -hmm. um, and, and really pulling this out and saying, Hey, if we're looking at this generally, the practice of giving thanks is actually really central to most native groups and it's still practiced today. And what we saw when we were growing up is that the first Thanksgiving was often portrayed as a really friendly group meal where pilgrims and generic unnamed Indians came together to eat and give thanks. Mm-hmm. Um, but the the accurate history is the Wampanoag were the tribe that was responsible for the first Thanksgiving. And the first Thanksgiving had much more to do with political alliances and mm-hmm. the diplomatic history of that tribe. Right. in pursuit of generalized peace than it had to do with anyone thinking that the English settlers were great. <laughs> the, yeah. yeah, It wasn't a celebration. <laughs> it, it, you know, it, it was an act of diplomacy. Mm-hmm. And for me, thinking about how divided our time is, how cool would it be to actually center the fact that the first Thanksgiving was an act of diplomacy because Mm -hmm. the Wampanoag people had a really long history of serious skill in dealing with other native nations um, well before the English arrived. And so the act of the first Thanksgiving wasn't actually the first. This was part of the history of that tribe who was really skilled in diplomacy. Mm -hmm. I love, uh, the idea as you're saying this, um, because I also, you know, don't know and need to learn. Um, I love the idea that Thanksgiving can be a time of learning about uh, different culture um, in, you know, all angles, you know, like what we're talking about now. Yeah. 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 And, and food was shared and mm-hmm. knowledge was shared about um, the land. And that's actually what helps the English settlers survive. Uh, And then what happened is the English continued to attack (laughs) the tribes that fed them and helped them and everything basically went to shit. Um, So, you know, you know, we, we know that particular set of history um, that's really tragic in terms of a loss of culture um, and and the denigration of what could have been a really rich co-joined culture as different groups um, began to combine as the Americas were settled. Yeah. I also love the idea of, um, I'm sure you've done many of these, a Friendsgiving where you're inviting friends, but with the intention of all different types of friends, different cultures, people you may not even, you know, hang out with inviting friends of friends, that kind of stuff. So what you're left with a, a group, a collective that, that you maybe normally wouldn't even be in front of, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and what you're suggesting does truly honor the the original intent um, of of the first Thanksgiving. Um, another piece of this that I think it's important to highlight, especially from a coaching perspective, because it plays into the idea that as coaches, we need to continually generate awareness about what's going on for folks in the world around us. Mm-hmm. And That is taking a look at the first Thanksgiving that was an act of diplomacy, but also 
was representative of a period of time in which English settlers gained um, indigenous knowledge about how to engage with the land and nature. Mm. And that's really important right now because from the perspective of positive psychology, um, recent literature suggested that we can't separate any conversations about indigenous culture from the land and from stewardship of conservationist efforts and from the conversation about climate change. Mm -hmm. And you know why is this important for coaches? There was a, a really staggering statistic that came out um, from the American Psychological Association that more than two thirds of people who live in America experience climate anxiety and 84% of children and young adults are worried and 59% are extremely worried. Yeah. And so we have this big kind of gaping wound where everyone's looking around and saying, uh oh. <laughs> and here with linking to indigenous culture and, and stewardship, we have a lot of space for antidotes and healing, um, perhaps leaning even more heavily on this idea of restoration and diplomacy. Mm -hmm. I know that we've talked about it before, um, but the REI report, REI um, as, an, as an organization, as a corporation, has commissioned an extensive amount of research on the relationship between humans and nature. And this is a pull quote from one of their studies. We are at a crossroads. We know that the uh, average American spends 95% of their time inside. Mm. This growing disconnect from nature will exacerbate rising rates of chronic health problems. What do you make of this? Well, I was just thinking, uh, so I just got back. We were uh, at our uh, little mountain house in Idlewild, which is uh, nature. And uh, we were selling a couch and the person that bought it was telling us about um, Palm Springs and how it's uh, at times 125 degrees. I mean, mm -hmm. just because of, uh, you know, the, the, the climate change and stuff. And uh, it's, it's not even livable there <laughs> at, at times. And how he was saying that people are now um, running toward the mountains, like literally running toward nature because uh, it's either too hot or things have changed or they want to escape from the uh, concrete jungle. And uh, yeah, this, this, as you're saying this, I was just thinking about this conversation that happened yesterday. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm really heartened by this. It seems like the pandemic caused a real shift where mm -hmm. a lot more people turned towards nature, turned oh, yeah. towards connection yeah. with nature, rest, relaxation, purpose, and the next threshold that we need to cross in terms of our collective consciousness is to really wake up about what's happening to our planet and what's happening to us as a species. Mm -hmm. The REI report came out several years ago, but it was able to demonstrate that humans are becoming an indoor species. Mm. And in terms of you know life on this earth, that's absolutely terrifying because it would posit that we're going to need to continue to rely on technology for survival. And that just seems really at opposition with everything that we know about the natural order. Yeah. I think for um, anyone listening, you know, the, for me, there's a, a lot of reminders in this conversation. Uh, the first one being to uh, encourage you to redefine Thanksgiving and then um, an obligation to uh, know history, what's truth, what happened, uh, because you are a coach, and then uh, also customize Thanksgiving and the meaning of Thanksgiving to you. Absolutely. And, you know, implicit in that, I think, is, is our responsibility to speak up. You know, generating mm -hmm. awareness is, is absolutely wonderful for you as a coach. If you can become aware of how the people around you might be impacted by climate anxiety. That is a great introduction to say, hey, in this season of Thanksgiving, let's also have a conversation about what happened mm -hmm. at that time when the Wampanoag tribe 
shared resources on stewardship of the earth with English settlers so that they could survive. And we all have the opportunity now to return to those teachings, elevate indigenous practices, and hopefully, you know, save our planet for future generations. Yeah. I also just had a thought, you know, what if Thanksgiving was a day of service, you know, so instead of um, just eating and having a meal with friends, but you're also um, serving, especially if you're a coach. So I don't know what that looks like, but maybe you're creating a group, maybe you're, you know, um, uh, doing some free individual sessions, but um, any kind of service that that you want to do to give back for Thanksgiving would also be really interesting. It would be. And, you know, in the spirit of service, thinking about sharing resources, sharing knowledge, sharing mm-hmm. companionship, you know, going back to the version of you as a child that got so much um, out of being able to plug into a quintessential experience. I also just want to call for folks to look around and see, is there a neighbor? Is there a friend? Is there someone that you haven't considered mm-hmm. who would really benefit from a seat at your table? Oh, yeah. I want to say I'm glad you said that because, again, now going full circle to when we started this, being the uh, nine-year-old orphan, you know, that was welcome to the table. Um, And it wasn't just about the food. It was just about me going, having a place to go for the holiday. Yeah. And and that is, um, that's a privilege. Yeah. Yeah. It's a privilege and it's something that many folks take for granted. And it's something that, you know, many of us have the opportunity to extend to others. So, you know, as we're thinking about service, um, you can, you can extend acts of service right in your own home and you can extend acts of service through, um, companionship, through communication, through, uh, education and, and awareness. Yeah. I mean, now more than ever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, happy Thanksgiving. And, uh, we hope that uh, you just digest and consider um, this new approach, this new angle, if it is new for you. And um, happy Thanksgiving to you, Noel. I appreciate you in my life and uh, this whole journey with Lumia. Absolutely. Same to you. It's, yeah. been, it's been a good ride. And something that I, I genuinely appreciate is the space to excavate and, and have these conversations during our podcasts, in our classrooms. And that our whole organization is geared towards uh, lifting different voices and and learning what we missed along the way. Yeah. Shout out to all the students and uh, my little uh, crew every week in office hours. Um, You all have been a a catalyst to, to my life and I give thanks to you as well. Awesome. Awesome. All right, my friend. Well, let us go out into the wild and um and do what we will to celebrate this holiday be well thanks for listening to everything life coaching if you're feeling the draw to become a coach head to lumiacoaching.com slash everything explore a new career that brings fulfillment gives you a true sense of purpose and a bold community to do it with Lumia is ready to equip you with the tools, training, and community you will need to reach your goals. If you're ready to build a unique coaching business on your own terms while making an impact on the world at large, Lumia is the next bold step in your coaching journey. That's lumiacoaching.com slash everything. And hey, if you're waiting for a sign, this is it.